Okay, this is one of those integrated reasoning questions. It's called two-part analysis. There's four types of questions. This one is called two-part analysis. Over a period of five academic years, from this year to that year, the number of faculty at a certain college increased despite a decrease in student enrollment from this amount in the first year. So already you know you're comparing two time slots from this year to that year. Um, you're, you're also going to compare the number of faculty to the number of students and there's some kind of ratio in there um, and you can compare that ratio between 1999 and 2004 so that's the sense of the problem you already have in the given expressions F and S represent the percent change in the number of faculty students faculty and students respectively over the five years so you know that these are percent changes from 99 to 04. Now R represents the number of students per faculty member so this is a ratio so R represents a ratio that happened in one specific year whereas F and S are, are more changes that happen between the two years. The percent change in a quantity X is calculated using the formula this stuff. Okay so this is just a generic formula um, you should recognize it for example it's just basically saying the amount of change on the top divided by the original amount and then you just multiply by 100 so for example if the original amount was 100 which is x old if the original was 100 and then the new one was 105 well the change is 5 divided by the original 100 so that's a 5% change um, so this is just a generic formula you don't really need to pay too much attention to this. Now let's just jump into the question. So this question is, select the expression that represents the number of faculty in 1999. Now think about that, the number of faculty. What information do we have? We have the percent change of uh, faculties and students. Remember this percent change is between the two years. This question is asking you what is the actual number in one particular year. So we already know that this, whatever the answer is, it has nothing to do with FNS. So it has nothing to do with FNS. Now what other information do we have? Well we do know that R represents the number of students per faculty member in that specific year. Okay, so that specific year, 1999, we have a ratio that represents the number of students per faculty member. Our job is to get the actual number. So we have the ratio um, and we need the actual number for faculty. Well, what else do we know? Well, we have the actual number of students in 1999. So we have the actual number of students. You have the ratio of students to faculty that year. All you need to do is find the number of faculty. So that, those are the three pieces of information that you need to answer this question. Now let's pull up this question. Uh, we pushed it up here and made some room here so we could write some stuff. So we're talking about the year 1999. And the information that we have is that we have 5,500 5, students in this particular year. And we also have this ratio. And pay attention to the metrics of this ratio. So this ratio we're talking about number of students per faculty. That means students is on top per faculty. That means faculty is on bottom. Now how can we combine these two expressions? You have number of students and then number of students per faculty member. How do we combine these two to get the number of here, the number of faculty in 1999? Well, if you move this faculty member up to the top, because you always want faculty on top if you're going to have the final metric to be faculty members. So we need to get this faculty member up on top somehow. And if we push this on top and then maybe if we push this on bottom, then we'll have faculty members per students. In other words, 1 over R. With that number of students on the bottom, then you could somehow cancel this with students and then multiply it out. So to draw it out, we this one comes down to students over 1. 
this one becomes if you flip R to make it 1 over R then you'll get faculty member per students and you can just cancel the students out and you'll get faculty members so essentially what I'm saying is you take 5500 you multiply it by 1 over R which is the same as dividing it by R and that'll give you the number of faculty in 1999 now let's go back here so we already said that F's and F are irrelevant so it's probably not C, D, or E um, which one of these three? well we already said it's 5500 and then you multiply it by 1 over R so that's the same as dividing it by R and that'll give you this one right here so the answer box that you choose for the number of faculty in 1999 would be this one right here and mark that as your final answer and then move on to the next question.